there have been variations of improvement with civil rights in certain countries. However, in Cuba, that is not the case. Under the communist leadership of the Castro brothers, Cuban citizens live in a world where civil and human rights are not accessible. In the same fashion, civil rights are designed to defend the well-being of each citizen no matter the race, gender, or age, which should be a vital part of living in Cuba. In examining the three time periods of the Ten Years' War, the mid-1900s, and present-day Cuba, one comprehends that with the help of José Martí, Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, and, and Antonio Maceo, Cuba has made some progress in expanding their own civil rights. To begin with, the Ten Years' War, 1868 through 1878, was a fight between Cuba and Spain for the independence of Cuba. It all began with a man named Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, who set his phrase Sui, then declared war on Spain. Hence the name, the war lasted 10 years and finally came to an end when both sides signed the Pact of Sajon. This pact stated that the slaves who fought in the war on both sides would be free. However, slavery would not be abolished and Cuba was still under Spanish rule. A lieutenant in the war named Antonio Maceo instigated against this treaty, as it did not achieve the goals of the revolution to free slaves and become independent from Spain. Regardless, the Ten Years' War failed and Cuba did not gain independence from Spain until the Spanish-American War, which ended in 1898. Jose Martí was a Cuban writer who played a significant role in the Cuban War of Independence, also known as the Spanish-American War, which was the final war of the three-part surge to overthrow Spain and went back freedom for Cuba. He ended up combining forces with all of the Cubans who lived in Florida, as well as the U.S. Army. If not for the United States, the Cubans may not have won the war. This strengthened the forces in the war and enabled the Cuban-American army to overcome the Spaniards. Martí was the man to push for the war against the great Spanish giants. He shared his love for writing and passion for politics at a young age, which ultimately influenced Martí to take on a more prominent role in the wars of independence. The Americans, next to the Cuban warriors, were able to overtake the Spanish army. Because of the Spanish-American War, the control of Cuba was given to the United States military on the 1st of January in 1899 until the 20th of May in 1902. Throughout this time period, Cuban's government was much more efficient because of all the public work that was being done in the well-being of Cuba. In May of 1902, Tomás Estrada Palma became the first president of Cuba. He worked heavily on the trade of Cuban sugar, which helped and dominated the economy in the first half of the 20th century. Estrada later resigned in 1906 due to the unpredictability of his party. Throughout 1909 through 1925, Cuba was faced with presidents who were very corrupt, in which the U.S. intervened to try and help Cuba. The government was accused of not allowing Afro-Cubans to hold office. Therefore, Afro-Cubans protested against the laws that prohibited political organization of race and religion. In 1925, Manchado was elected into office and became Cuba's first official dictator. Like many others, he made promises, but it wasn't until his second term where he created the martial law which revoked the freedom of speech, press, and assembly of the citizens. As the economy fell into a depression, Manchado used cruel methods to try and stabilize the economy in which he failed and fled the country. Fulgencio Batista gained control of the army and ruled Cuba through many presidents until he was finally elected president. In July 26, 1953, Fidel Castro led men into the hopes of causing an uprising against Batista, where he failed and was arrested along with his brother Raul Castro. They were released to Mexico, where they began organizing plots to invade Cuba. On December 2, 1956, he came back to Cuba, where some of his men escaped, some of them being his brother and Che Guevara. They began the guerrilla campaign, and finally, on January 1, 1959, Batista fled to the Dominican Republic, then to Portugal, where he spent the rest of his life in exile. Castro began to create a one-party government that practiced dictatorship control over all aspects of Cuban politics. Many disagreed with what he was doing 
and immigrated to the United States. Meanwhile, Castro helped social services by making health care and education free to all Cubans. However, the economy took a heavy downfall because of the poor trade on the sugar cane that once made the economy thrive. Castro remained friendly with the Soviet Union until the Soviet Union collapsed that took Castro by surprise. When Castro's daughter criticized her father's rule, she took sanction with the U.S. A year later, he canceled the restrictions of those who wanted to leave Cuba, resulting in thousands fleeing to the U.S., which became known as Freedom Plotia. Overall, Castro is recognized as a dictator who has taken away basic human rights to the citizens of Cuba, which has led to little, if any, basic civil rights to the Cubans. In the last 18 years, the country of Cuba has gone through leadership changes that may lead to the support of voters who were previously against the Communist Party. For the last 60 years, the Castro brothers have been in power. However, in the last few weeks, Cuba has elected a new leader. Miguel Diaz Canel is the recently elected leader of Cuba, although his policies are very similar to that of the Castro brothers. Diaz Canel said it himself that Raul Castro would still hold a vital role in the Cuban government, but he was simply not the leader in charge of the decisions. The country as a whole has made improvements to foreign relations as well. The country has handled the issues with the United States and even hosted former President Obama in a visit in 2015. The Cuban leader has changed, but the level of rights remains untouched. The government control has prevented the citizens of Cuba from experiencing the same rights that we do in the United States. Nili vs. Henkel. This case argues the rights of Cubans in other countries and foreigners' rights in Cuba. The issue is, what will happen to a citizen of one country who runs into issues with a foreign country? The two countries are involved, the two countries that are involved are the United States and Cuba. The reason that the criminal will have to face a foreign country's laws are because one country does not rule the other. Each country has their own government and has their own laws and standards. Ms. Mary's Quintana. Quintana was a woman in Damas de Blanco, or the Ladies in White, and she was paid for her work with the Civil Rights Defenders by a Cuban living in Miami. The issue was that she was receiving funds from another country and that is against the laws of Cuba. Although what she did was wrong, the police are still very, were still very aggressive when arresting her. Ms. Marius Quintana was a part of a peaceful civil rights movement, and the government could not handle that. There was a quote that accurately describes the Cuban situation, which reads, The fact that the Cuban authorities are clamping down on human rights defenders who work openly shows that the Cuban government has absolutely no interest in the rights of its citizens. The tie of this case to the civil rights is that the government isn't prioritizing the rights of all Cubans. They cannot simply let go of something that should be their right. Eliuska Gomez's son. The final case was about a guy who was involved in a public fight and was arrested for it. This guy believed that he had the right to a fair trial in court. However, Cuba does not exercise basic human rights or civil rights granted by the government. This made it impossible for the son of Eliuska Gomez to have a fair system of justice and remained in prison because of the lack of civil rights. Even the EU has attempted to step in and convince the Cuban government to consider a path towards civil rights for all citizens. The story of Cuba is the life of most Spanish-speaking slash Latin American countries in which they deal with a revolutionary leader who rises to power promising freedoms, rights, equality, and wealth. However, once they reach power, they do not remain truthful to their promises, which causes chaos, dangers, and turmoil. The Castro brothers, and now Miguel Diaz, have ruled and will rule Cuba with limitations on human rights, which leads to less civil rights. Therefore, what needs to be done to help improve the civil rights of these people is the dictatorship needs to end. The people need to elect their own president instead of the dictator assigning the next successor. And finally, lift the limitations of the human rights to citizens.